lost memories I just wanna let it go for the night That would be the best therapy for me All the crazy shit I did to tonight Those would be the best memories I just wanna let it go for the night That would be the best therapy for me Hey, hey This is the Sports Show podcast, and today we're joined with Conor McManaman. How are you, mate? All good, mate. Good. good. How are you? I am all right. Thanks. So, just before we start talking about the football, uh, I'll ask you a wee question. If you have a dinner party with three people, who would it be? Uh, alive or dead? Both. You, you can choose. I would say Paul Gascoigne. Uh, I think he would have a few stories and then locally probably uh, Leonardo DiCaprio maybe and Joe Gormley. Class, class. So uh, what made you start playing football then growing up? Uh, I was just always following my, my dad and he was playing for Kill Day and I just went with him every every Saturday to watch him and then I just started locally like playing for Kill Day, their youth teams and then just worked my way up from there but just really from my dad, I just followed him from an early age and he was playing for Kill and that was really it, that just started it. Yeah, and then obviously you started your career at Linfield then, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, I, I made the break for it, I made my debut for Linfield, yeah. Yeah, so what happened there then? Did you end up signing for Linfield then, uh, whenever you were younger? I was, I went to Lisburn Youth and then I left Lisburn Youth and signed for Clivenville under 16 I think it was and then I left there and signed for Linfield I think I was only uh, maybe under 15 to Clinville and then I signed in under 16 to Linfield and then that's when David Jeffrey then brought me up into the first team and then I made my debut I think it was 16 or 17 when I made my debut away to Balamala yeah and th- did you always dream as a kid of obviously becoming a, a footballer then yeah it was always something I had you know I had loads of trials and stuff when I was younger and always something I wanted to do and you know maybe a bit later now but then you know with playing to them and they give you a chance to go full time it was always something I would like to do and it was an opportunity I couldn't really turn down yeah so I'm just to obviously go back to you starting your career off at Linfield how, what, how was it to sort of make your debut for a premiership club as st- still a young a young footballer yeah it was great um, like I was going to say still see David now I would still say to him that you know, I'm so grateful they gave me that opportunity, especially when the likes of Peter Thompson, Mark McAllister, there's so many great players there. And, you know, to come through at such a big club at Linfield and, you know, the, the amount of titles and medals them boys have won and that squad had won, it was, it was a great opportunity for me. And, you know, and the, I couldn't get my big long umbrella coat off at the way to Bala Mallard one time. He, not on my de- before me and my debut, they, I was on the bench and he turned around and said, if you don't get that coat off you in two minutes, you're not coming on. So it was... I remember wriggling the arms and all out of it. Didn't even get the sip on done in time. So it was just a nervous wreck. I'll never forget it. And, but the boys there, Matthew Tipp, Mark McAllister, Peter Thompson, all the strikers, they were all sort of really good with me. And, and, and it was a great bunch. Then after your time at Linfield, then you went on to save Glen, or Glen Thorn, where you are now. What was your time like at Glen Thorn the first time? Were you getting more game time and stuff? Um, oh, To be honest, when I was younger, it was, um, when I went there and I was at Linfield, I sort of... I made a few mistakes that, you know, I thought it was probably better than what I was as far as I got ahead of myself. And uh, when I was at Glen Thorne, then Eddie Patterson was there. He signed me and I was actually playing under Eddie and I remember scoring home to Kike and the next minute we win 2-0 and he gets got sacked like straight after the match. And then Alan Kernahan came in and he didn't like me, so it was time to move on. And so it was just when Eddie got sacked and same as at Linfield, David Jeffrey got sacked and Warren Feeney came in and you know, I don't. I made a few mistakes, done a few silly things. They punished me for it, and then I obviously threw the head up, and it was time to move on. But you know, you're young and you're inexperienced, and you you just learn from these things. Yeah, and then whenever you were playing for Glen Torn, then as well the first time, as I say, 
you made your debut in the Europa League qualifying. Did see whenever you were playing that match, did it feel any different? Or did it just feel like a normal, normal match? No, I was so young then. I just I was just going to play a football match, you know. Didn't really take any of it really in. And it was obviously looking back, it's a great experience. And going away in Europe, the trips are always good crack and they're they're great for the team getting together and bonding and stuff. But that especially that night, you know, there was I was just, I don't even know what was a seven eighteen maybe. 17, 18, there was, there was no pressure on me to go and deliver. I think Curtis Allen maybe was out injured at the time, so I was starting up front, and, you know, I'd, I'd, it was a great feeling to score. I'll never forget it, and it, it, it was a great experience, but pressure-wise, I, I didn't feel any because I was so young, I think. Yeah, and then you went on in the same for one point. How was your time there? Yeah, I loved it. It was, it was great. It was, like I said, it was a step down, sort of mentally, and, your, your own ego, it's hard to take jumping down to the championship. But, you know, thinking back, it was probably, it was probably a great, it was a great step for me. It was a thing I had to do because it was being at the, the two biggest clubs in the country. And then to go down to Warren Point and play championship. But with a great team, Aaron Trainer, Liam Bagnell, John McGuigan, Marty Murray, Darren Murray, you know, it was, it was a great side. And we won the championship down there and then got promoted. and Matthew Tipton was the manager there and he really looked after me because obviously I come through at Linfield with him so I knew him and that's the only reason I went down to Warren Point because of him and uh, then he left to go to Portadown and Liam, Liam Bagnall went to Clinville, Iron Trainer went to Coleraine and there was all these boys getting moves and I was sort of thinking when's my time coming so I had to play an extra say maybe six months, seven months nearly that full season before Barry Gray then sent me for Clinville so it was great for me. It was a great learning curve. It was a great experience, and you know it was good crack. So then, was it a, it was a good experience then? Obviously, playing the championship football, and then obviously Clinville coming in the same year again to bring you back up to the Premiership. Yeah, it was a no brainer. I remember Barry Gray ringing me and saying, "You know, we're interested in signing you." And I don't think a phone call could have been thirty seconds, and I was just happy. I didn't even care what I was getting or what the contract said. I was just so happy to get back to a big club and you know try and re-establish myself and, and make a career for myself at one of the big teams yeah and then a few years in at Cliftonville just playing brilliant is that when you, you sort of made your breakthrough and you were like that, right this is you've made a name for yourself um, to be honest the first six first six months maybe at Cliftonville six seven months was really hard um, I wasn't really playing much I was playing left wing I was playing right wing I was playing um, I wasn't starting I was coming on I was just all over the place and um, Barry Gray and Jared Law then had a meeting with me and said I was I could leave Clivenville. You know, I'm open to they're open to let me go to different clubs if I wanted to leave, but I still had like eighteen months left in my contract. So I said no, I'll sit and fight for my place. And because we weren't really going that well, to be honest, we weren't. It was not as if we were flying and winning every week. And Barry Gray got sacked then, and then as soon as Paddy McLaughlin came in, then that's to refer that to my career sort of took off. Me and him just. Just got on like a house and fire. I knew how to get the best out of me. And I scored in his first game, 1 0 win over Nuri, and we just literally took off from there. Yeah. And so now I'll go to towards the end of your career, Cliftonville. It was the County Adam Shield final. And it was actually one of my first ever Cliftonville matches going to watch. And it, the atmosphere that was incredible. Like you must have felt the, the pressure on the pitch. Yeah, big time. Um, to be honest, when it went one each, I was. Just wanted to blow it up and go the extra time because I thought we were beat. I didn't think, you know, it's just like happy days. We've got an extra half an hour because Ballymena were better than us in the nights. You know, we didn't really play well at all and we were favoured to get into it. And when it was Thomas McGuire scored the first round uh, and then Ryan Curtin scored the winner, it was two minutes later, it was unbelievable. It was, and you know, going back to the social club with the trophy and the, the party we had that night, it, it's great memories. And at Clinville, you are really like a big family. You know, all, all the boys are all mates and, and they all get on really well and I still get on well with them till this day, you know. So it's it, it's a great club and, it, and it's great people involved and it's a great manager. Right, so now is it a kind of a controversial one? Before leaving Cliftonville, there was a talk that you were going to Lorne, but then you went to Glen Torn and stuff. What what sort of happened there? Yeah, it was done. The deal was done to Lorne, to be honest. It was... I, I, Agreed verbally that I would sign for on. I spoke to Kenny and spoke to Tiernan Lynch, and they were sort of on me all month of January. And Clinton knew that. And then Clinton will give me permission to speak to both clubs to agree personal terms before they agreed transfer fee. And I just sat down with people who were close to me and 
we just weighed up the options and Glenn Thorne was closer to home and closer to the wee girl and I just took everything into, into consideration and I, I, you know, Glenn Thorne then offered me a better contract and assembly at the end of the day and it just takes more boxes to go to, to go to Glenn Thorne and, you know, it was a bit, I felt really, really bad on Kenny and Tiernan, especially so close or so after, like as much after, like we played them a couple of games after and it was a bit of, you were a bit awkward, you know, seeing them and, but now it's grand and, I have a really great relationship with Kenny Bruce. He texts me and rings me and you know, wishes me all the best and stuff all the time. So that awkwardness is all done. It's football at the end of the day. I've done what I felt was best for me and that was it. Yeah. So then this year uh, for Glenn Thorne, it's been a massive year. You're currently the second top goal scorer behind your, your teammate, Jay Donnelly. How, how big of a year has it been for you? Yeah, personally, it's the best year I've had. You know, in my career, it's been... I scored plenty of goals and, you know, I've really enjoyed it. And Jay's been unbelievable. So the two of us to be one and two up in the, you know, up there, I just, you know, I obviously just wish we were, we could go closer to the league or we hopefully we have something to show for it at the end of the year, you know, to have his best year, or my best year. And if you have nothing to show for it, you know, it sort of means nothing. So we, I know we have a big match tonight and there's another chance to, to score more goals and to close the gap in the leaders. But, Hopefully, um, but it's personally for me, it's yeah, it's been it's been unreal. It's been a very very good year. Yeah, and then obviously, I wish you the best of luck as well. By the way, but next year, what's your ambition going to be then? Uh, is it to go for the league or what? What's your ambition going to be? Yeah, it's at Glen Torn. You just you have to target try and win league titles, try and win Irish cups. You you're one of the biggest clubs. We have one of the biggest budgets. There's no denying it. And us players have to really thrive on that pressure that. That that's put on us, you know. We have we have a great squad there, but not, you know we have to show it. Yeah. So I think that's everything covered, mate. Unless you want to say anything else. No, mate. That's that's hundred percent. Right. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Wish all the best of luck for tonight. Yes, mate. Thanks <laughs> very much. Cheers. Later. All right. Bye. Good man.